Okay, good afternoon. Welcome back to Favaro Foundation University Hospital. We are waiting for all of you. I have to tell you the truth. It has been a very intense uh, waiting minutes uh, because some situation we have here that I want to show you in a few minutes. Let me introduce the team, Dr. Lev, Joaquin on my right side, Kevin, the, the X-ray technician, the same to uh, uh, Hernan, Matias, our nurse. Here is Valeria, who is the specialist uh, product for uh, Shockwave. And also is Ariel behind me, who is the specialist from Minos uh, device. And, and Dr. Navas and- uh, <laughs> George. And Dr. Well, <laughs> George and Dr. Jaime here, Jaime. the two anesthesiologists working together because this is a very complex uh, patient. Uh, so thank you for uh, helping us uh, in the morning. Uh, let me show you the slides. Uh, I will share the case. Uh, the, the first slide, please. So behind uh, in, the, in the control room, we also uh, have Dr. Uh, Andres uh, Rodriguez, who is our a digital moderator, and he's always uh, bringing the question from the audience. Uh, I think this case uh, will bring a lot of questions uh, to everybody. So next slide. So he's a young male, 67 years old, who presented uh, in a control uh, for hypertension, dyslipidemia, severe smoker, going severe COPD, uh, with a minus renal fa failure I will show you that he underwent the coronary angiography in another center some years ago for a, an episode of chest pain. And he was diagnosed when only one vessel disease and medical treatment uh, was indicated. In this uh, summary information of this procedure, it is referred that uh, he received an IWUS evaluation of the left main, uh, which uh, had at that time uh, a minus uh, or and lesions. He also suffered from intermittent uh, claudication. So in summary, it's in a pan vascular disease with severe COPD and also it's a significant, uh, he has a significant obesity as you can see him on the table. Next. So the ECG uh, is quite normal uh, on the consulting room. All the blood tests uh, are almost normal with some elevation of uh, the urea and creatinine, and creatinine, sorry. And the echo double evaluation show a preserved left ventricular ejection fraction with some uh, le left ventricular hypertrophy. A stress test done in another center also was referred as negative stress test. Uh, it was stopped because uh, he uh, suffered from fatigue uh, due to his uh, pulmonary disease. Next. So this is the CT scan evaluation that we received with the patient for evaluation for uh, an EVAR procedure. The patient was referred for our vascular surgeons, but they refused the patient for surgery and, uh, and send the patient to us uh, to treat by endovascular procedures. As you can observe, there is a significant calcification in both uh, iliac arteries, calcification on the left renal artery, uh, Five centimeter aneurysm uh, with some, uh, I mean, uh, uh, thrombus, uh, with thrombus irregularities inside the aneurysm. Next. So there you can observe uh, the calcification of the vessel on the, on the left of the panel, then the diameter of the aneurysm, which is 60. And this is for us a, an indication for uh, treatment. Next. So he has a hostile proximal neck. It's a little bit conical with some thrombus in the posterior wall. Uh, so probably according to this neck, which is also short, according to this, the CT, not according to the angiography that the, you will see afterwards. Uh, probably it's a patient that we can discuss which technique we should use, a regular EVAR or uh, think about endo anchors or chimney or something like this. I think it's not a candidate for a, a dedicated device, a, a branch device, because uh, both iliac arteries are quite small and it's impossible to go through these vessels. Next. So this is the length of the aneurysm, which is uh, 13 centimeters from the lower renal artery with a diameter of 60. Next. And this is the right iliac uh, uh, artery. The common iliac artery is seven uh, millimeter in length. 
with the diameter of spy in the, I mean, in the narrowest part of the vessel with significant calcification, a concentric calcification there. And then we have an quite acceptable extern external iliac artery. Next. Something similar, but with a little less calcium on the left iliac artery, uh, five I mean, uh, centimeters in length, nine millimeters in diameter. Uh, but the external iliac artery have a little bit more calcification with the site of stenosis with uh, five millimeters in diameter with almost uh, 180 degrees of calcification in this vessel. Next. So in summary, it's a young patient with a lot of disease, pulmonic, severe pulmonic disease with hostile anatomy, coronary artery disease, and he was referred uh, for EVAR after uh, surgeons refused to uh, open surgery for him. So this is our plan, next. So we have decided to, uh, this is, was our original plan, to, to do EVAR for percutaneous vascular access with a surgical standby, of course. We decided to use, again, an ultra low profile device because this calcification but we have thought and discussed with Dr. Lev uh, uh, before uh, planning the patient to do predilatation with the intravascular uh, lithotripsy balloon. So to do um, shock wave there, just to fracture this calcium and to facilitate the, predil facilitate the predilatation of the arteries and to facilitate the advancement of the both devices, the main body and then the contralateral branch. Next. So this is the minus uh, device that we have introduced uh, here uh, in the last cases. Uh, and to a 28 millimeters in diameter of the body, the device is 14 French. If you go higher with a bigger uh, device like uh, 29, 29, 30, something like this, you have to use a 16 French device. So according to the next, uh, according to the iliac artery, we have discussed with Ariel, our uh, 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 specialist from Minos, and uh, we have decided to go with a 14 French device, uh, which is gonna be 28 millimeters in diameter for the main body at the, at the level of the proximal neck. Next. So this is the device in comparison with other device. In my opinion, it's uh, probably impossible to cross uh, these iliac arteries with the regular devices that we use here, like Endurance or Scenic or Zotec devices, which are uh, more are bigger than this uh, device. Next. And then uh, some information about the peripheral lithotripsy balloon. We have uh, chosen the seven, which is uh, almost uh, the bigger diameter of the balloon, but also we have a eight, no, seven is the biggest. The length of the device is 16 milli 60 millimeters, sorry. And we have 300 pulses. Uh, according, you know, we are living in Argentina, sometimes to use a lot of new devices is quite difficult. So we have decided to use uh, for this catheter half and a half, probably, 160 or something like this on the right, which is more calcified. And then the rest of the pulses are gonna be used for the left iliac artery. Next. So let's go back to the, to the lab. And uh, before discussing the, this strategy, I, I had to tell you what had happened in the 30 minutes that we were waiting here to do the procedure. First, advance very fast. We uh, decided to use Prostar because the calcification guided by Anjo and Echo, you see the calcium there. It's almost impossible to put the proglide there or the regular proglide that we have here. Remember again that this is not the new one that is gonna be at the end of the year. Next. So the same for the contralateral side. Next, I was, we introduced the, 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 the Prostar. Next, you, you can observe there the calcification, we try to put uh, this uh, wire that we use from the common, from the, excuse me, wait a minute, from the superficial femoral artery, but on the left side, it was uh, too small, impossible to deploy this wire, but uh, this is a 12 French device. I think it's not gonna be necessary, but here in, on the right side, which is our, at least a, a selected uh, entrance side for the main body device, we uh, deploy this wire for protection 
just in case uh, we have bleeding. So we were there, uh, it was 11.30 or something like this. So 30 minutes before live and the patient went and the pressure, the blood pressure went down. It was extremely difficult to recover the patient with some ST depression on the monitor, on the ACC. That's why Dr. Jaime and Dr. Nievas worked together as an anesthesiologist. We introduced a central venous line on the left side of the patient for uh, drugs. Uh, we did echo. The echo was, uh, uh, the, the left ventricular function was acceptable, but it was extremely difficult to keep the pressure at acceptable uh, and blood level. So we discussed with Dr. Lev and we decided to test uh, the coronaries because uh, uh, undoubtedly something uh, went wrong uh, before starting the, the ER procedure. So show me this now, the, the next one. So when we did the answer, you can observe the calcification in the superior wall of the left main, uh, very tortuous left anterior descending artery and also the, the left cirque but without significant lesions. Next, we did another angio. Here is a little bit confusing. The right uh, is occluded with a good collateral circulation from septal branches. Next. And there you can observe a severe osteal lesion on the left main, and I think probably related with the pulmonary disease and some hypotension and, and some bad perfusion due to this lesion. The patient did not tolerate the, very well the, the anesthetic procedure. And after the discussion here again with Dr. Lev, we decided to proceed uh, with IBUS evaluation of this uh, osteal lesion, which was supposed to be evaluated in another setting and considered what, as a mild lesion. So probably if you can share the IBUS, uh, let me see if we change uh, the, uh, I don't know if you can share here the IBUS, Hernan, no. Okay, okay. Let's see, uh, please, th this is the IBUS. So this was an emergent IBUS. Uh, the IBUS was coming from the proximal LED, as you can observe there, significant calcification. Uh, the, the catheter jumped out, but there was tight lesion on the ostium. Probably Dr. Andres has a picture of the lesion if you have it. So there it was uh, five millimeters, uh, the area, probably lower, probably it was uh, not a perfect measure there with a minimal diameter of the 23. Discussion again here in the room, I mean, we decided to proceed with a, a left main implantation. Let's uh, show the answer again. With the 4.0 uh, reference yeah. diameter. Yeah. The, the, the distal reference, as Gustavo said, uh, is uh, 4.5 or something like this. Let's, uh, let's go fast because we don't have too much time. So we, we predilated with a 3.5 non compliant balloon at the osteal segment of the left main. You can observe there a significant improvement of the lumen. Next, we protected the left circumflex and we went just for an osteal lesion. This is the shortest stand that we have it here, 4.0, 13 millimeter in length, high pressure inflation, 20 atmospheres. And this is uh, uh, the angiographic uh, final outcome. And we have the IBUS probably, if we go back to the IBUS. So the circ was okay. And this is the final IBUS, as you can observe there. The stent was uh, perfectly opposed to the left main, well, uh, well open. Uh, and I think it was not necessary to go for pot or something like this. It was one or two millimeter protrusion into the, uh, the aorta uh, that we are sure that the ostium was uh, perfectly covered. So next, the ancho, let's go to the ancho. We did the angiography before starting just to check and you can observe on the right of your panel a very tight uh, renal stenosis. We are going to be close of the renal arteries for uh, body device deployment. So we have to change our strategy again and we decided to proceed to deploy the stent. Uh, please show it uh, very fast with the uh, pre-dilate this lesion. 
and then we uh, implanting the six millimeter uh, uh, stent at high pressure with an acceptable good outcome without no protruding too much into the aorta because uh, you know we have to deploy uh, the 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 graph exactly there. So okay, that's it. Yes, stop the answer. Here we are now. You can share the hemodynamics. The ACC is perfectly stable. The blood pressure is perfectly stable. So I think left main PCI was the correct decision before proceeding with the EVAR. Uh, it's uh, probably, I, I know that somebody will say, why not stop in here? But the patient is uh, prepared. Everything is done. I think we had to continue because the, the procedure was very short. Very good angiographic and I was outcome, very low contrast was used. And I think we are almost uh, in a perfect condition to, to proceed, Gustavo. And uh, for sure, we can ask uh, the audience for um, uh, any other questions. So we are preparing the catheter for, for um, uh, Joaquin. For a uh, uh, little tribe C, Gustavo is uh, Dr. Levis open. I'm going to prepare the connection here. The catheter is a uh, 014, so we have to put to introduce a regular J wire and then to put um, an 014 extra support and long wires. Uh, give me the connection, so we are not, it's okay. Um, yeah, trae el, el, el inflator, tenerlo ahí, Gustavo, sacale todo el gas. So it's very important, the preparation, very slowly, please, very slowly. And now please aspirate. We have to retrieve all the air from the balloon. If not, we have to do it once again. Let's do it like this, release, wait, 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 aspirate again. Turn back, no, no. And there. Okay. aspirate, aspirate again. Okay, so this is a very important step. And now we release very slowly. And now once Arch. again, take this, uh, Air out. Okay, and now we are okay. So Is we it, are going to start. Like to show the catheter. Yeah, let me go through the this O14 wire. The the catheter has how many electrodes? Quantos electrodes? Five electrodes. So the sparks uh, induce microwave. Uh, explosion with a big pressure there, as we showed in a coronary case that we did here on the left main, here, sorry, and um, produce a high pressure fracturing the calcium of uh, the vessel. The central uh, area or the central electrode is where we have more uh, powerful inflation. So there, we are exactly in the middle of the more, more significant calcification. Gustavo is gonna inflate at four. When the balloon is at four. Hmm? Yeah. Four. Now we are uh, delivering, and here, if you turn the, the machine to there, to this camera, you will see the show wave machine working. Okay. After 30 pulses, we have to inflate to six. Now it's a quiet part of the procedure. We have to take the time and it's time to ask Gustavo for the strategy and for what uh, was going on before the procedure. Six. Six. So Gustavo, would you have a, a deflate? Six and deflate. Uh, would yes, you have done a, something different? No, 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 of course not. I think that it's a, a very challenged case in a high-risk patient Four again. with uh, several comorbidities. 
So uh, after performing coronary and renal angioplasty, I think that this is uh, this is the right technique to afford this kind of patients. Um, I think that uh, the IVL will be um, very useful for this patient because the disrupt study three showed us mm -hmm. very good results in TVAR and EVAR patients. So I think that it will be very useful. After 30, you have to inflate up at six. Six, now? Um, yeah, uh, deflate. Okay. Uh, uh, remember that we have discussed uh, something here that for peripheral circulation, it's not necessary to deflate, but uh, my intention was to deflate to move a little bit uh, backward mm -hmm. here to the external, which always going to inflate that Four. Four again, I'm gonna deliver 30 pulses again. So you see on my right hand, the light, which is uh, uh, on and off. Uh, you might uh, hear some sound of the spark inside the balloon. The, the other, uh, I mean, important comment probably is that you can observe this wire, which is for protection, which is uh, tied by side with the balloon. It's not affecting the delivery of the energy. It's something also important to take uh, six, Gustavo, deflate, to take into consideration, especially when uh, you are doing a bifurcation or something like this on the uh, coronary field. It's, uh, four. Again, four. So after delivering this energy, we are going to dilate with a seven millimeter balloon at a little bit higher pressure than six before uh, preparing and introducing the E-bar device. So Andres, if we have uh, some questions from audience, online audience, please don't hesitate and bring to us. So we are 180, so uh, six. Six. We are going to do another one and then we are moved to the other side. Yeah. Six, four. Which is the? The impact. The impact. Well, well to prevent complications, uh, well, severe uh, vascular complications. Well, this is an important question. Uh, peripheral vascular disease has a negative impact on EVAR uh, procedures on the long-term follow-up because it increases the risk of uh, uh, branch uh, uh, occlusion, uh, especially for the contralateral uh, side where, where the branch is small. Uh, but anyway, it's something that we have to deal with. We have to be sure that we have an acceptable runoff uh, to deploy stennis if it is necessary on the external iliac arteries. And then uh, after the EVAR procedure, we check, uh, we check with the echo Doppler evaluation during the follow-up, which is the, the, in the anclea, ankial brachial index. And if it is too low, we study the peripheral circulation thinking about the possibility of uh, doing something endovascular to fix uh, some obstructions uh, there. So we are going to go contralateral. Okay. The balloon now has a probably a high profile, but anyway, I think it's not gonna be a problem to cross uh, these uh, lesions. Let me know when it's out. Please pull the wire. Here, more, 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 more. Mass. Okay, keep it there. Yes. Okay. One of the common and worried uh, problem of the EVAR is a vascular access. So with this uh, technique. Let's go. We can afford a, a serious problem of a thrombosis and 
impossible to uh, to uh, to access with the EVAR processes. We are four there. We are we are going to apply the energy. Well, ideally, uh, you have to use all the balloon energy and the side you want to treat. Here we are sh showing uh, to the audience our local limitations in Argentina. Uh, if uh, without any restriction, uh, six, mm -hmm. uh, probably this would have been a patient to use an eight millimeter balloon if you have it, deflate. On the on the common femoral arteries, and then uh, six or seven on the external iliac arteries. But uh, I have to, hand, to handle the situation just with only one balloon. So there you can observe uh, some indent balloon indentation, but which is uh, opening with the with the only four millimeters atmospheres uh, dilatation. Balloon siete. Uh, la presión está okay. Okay, because here, probably because the balloon is inflated, we are not having the correct blood pressure measurements. So please prepare the peripheral balloons, seven, the we two, and another in the inflator, so we can go fast. Uh, because we have some time constriction. You follow all these, uh, Limitations we have we had during before starting the procedure. So uh, at the end, uh, this is going to be a left main PCI, left renal artery PTA, and uh, hopefully uh, also a successful EOR procedure. It's something that we don't do never in the regular basis. This is a, a completely extraordinary situation. Six. Okay, deflate. Okay, inflate once again. Uh, I mean, for intravascular elitotripsy, I don't think uh, so. We don't have any absolute contraindication. Maybe we, I can ask uh, Valeria. Alguna contraindicación absoluta? No. 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 Not at all. Okay, dos, dos. Two balloons, so that we can go Six. faster. Deflate, uh, let's move for the last uh, run, okay. Let's go there for. I will not do ancho because we have done some extra contrast in a patient with the previous some renal dysfunction. So I bet that everything is okay. And I will not do the ancho. I just go, gonna go with the balloon to predilate the common femoral arteries. I will not uh, inflate on, on into the, the external iliac arteries just to prevent any dissection or complications. And then we are going to go six. Okay, no, six. Okay, that's it. Great. So leave this there so to prevent any contamination, but retrieve the balloon, leaving the wire in place. So you cannot see the wire because he's quite obese. We are ready, Valeria. We can move from there. You can disconnect and we can leave it here so we are not contaminating. Okay, perfect. Okay. Give me the balloon. So after this inflation, we are going to change the wires. Let me clean my hands. 
I have it. Okay. Do you have the other balloon? Yes. Okay. Oh. So you can inflate there. One, two, three, four. Give me the other balloon. Four. Okay. So probably we will take some time from the second case. Let Dr. Fawa know that we are going to take some time here. So probably you might inflate here where I have some difficulties, probably to, due to this wire. And now inflate here. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Okay, five here, six, eight. Eight. Both are seven, it's okay? Yes. Okay, play. Agarra Joaquin un insuflador. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight on the left. Eight. Eight, eight ten. Ten. Okay, deflate. Uh, let's go here. One, two, three, four, Gustavo. Five. Yes. Six. Six. Seven, eight, ten. Five. We have there some balloon indentation. On the external is okay, but on the internal we have still a, I mean, a, let's move up. Let's go here. Let's go here. Okay. okay. No, no. This one. Uh, this one. This yeah. one, the right one. Yeah. Ten. Eight. Okay. I think it's okay. Leave it there. Give me the one of the unplugged wire. Let's go to the more panoramic view. This wire is finished. Let me let me, let me take it. Okay. Show me uh, arriba. Okay. So now Gustavo is going to retrieve the balloon. Um, yeah. Now give me the right coronary catheter, the six French catheter. Although we have the, the renal mark, with the stent, we will put the catheter just in case, as always. Could you bring the device, please? Gustavo, could you receive the, the yes, device? And uh, Joaquin could help me. Venga. Joaquin, vení conmigo. Okay. 28 or 26? Uh, I think 26. So I think we. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Ariel uh, suggests 28. Okay, that's it. Uh, test. Uh, give me more Floro. I have to see where the renal stand is. No, Floro. Uh, yeah, okay, I see. 28. Mm -hmm. Patient is white, obese. Move forward. Okay, deflate this balloon. Bring the amplas wire. Rail amplas. Rail amplas. Uh, probably here we can use an extra stick, the lander quest. Yeah. So to prevent movement there. Yeah. Okay. We have a lot of calcification, so it's going to be a movement there. So probably it's better, okay, to go with an extra stick. And we save the. Ayudale ahí. No, no. Dame a mí. Ayudale a Gustavo que no se le va a sacar la prótesis. Ok. So this is Lander Quist, extra stiff wire. Although it's a low profile device, I think I'm going to have to push 
far to advance. It and good. hopefully it will advance. Okay, so now Dr. Lev is gonna retrieve the balloon and hold the, the sheath. And now is the time for the truth, as we always say here in Argentina. Vení, Joaquín, tenés la ingle. Please, comprimí bien. So Ariel is here just to prevent any uh, incorrect movement. All devices have tips and tricks. And it's important to uh, remember. So here I'm going to introduce it first. And then we will see what is going on. So we have resistance, but not too much. And I think we are more than successful and more than happy with this. It's okay, Joaquin. So yeah, push, give me a little bit zoom. Push because, on the landmarks. Yes, we have to orientate the landmark. Mm. Zoom. Please stay. So first is the uh, proximal marks exactly in the in the on the inferior uh, border of the renal stent. I'm not going to use uh, uh, contrast media. Then we have the capital I orientation. Let me give me this. I can use the, well, sorry, this. The I orientation here to be sure that the uh, device uh, branches are gonna be uh, side by side orientation. Is that correct? Okay, so now I have to release the security here. Let me clean my hands moving forward this device and then start uh, to rotate, keeping the alignment of the device. The device is starting to move up. I try to keep there and I try to keep the orientation. I rotate counter clock. So remember I had to go very close to the renal arteries due to this hostile uh, proximal neck. So now I have delivered the contralateral side, hold it there. I have to unscrew, unscrew here and to release the proximal fixation device. And there you have observed the delivery. This okay? Enough or more? Okay, okay, perfect. So a minimal test is regarding the renal position, this is uh, perfect there, just small shot, two CCs. Okay, it's okay, uh, Joaquin, now this is important step. I had to catheterize the contralateral branch, I need zoom. I use, usually use the road runner guide wire. Here, I need a, yes. a pin for rotation. Uh, when the wire touch something, it's because you are very close. Some, uh, okay, Gustavo, move it. I'm oh, sorry. No, <laughs> oh, sorry. But uh, there, when you feel this touch, it's probably because you are in. But here, I, I don't think so. We are in the wrong position. So let me see, hopefully we don't waste too much time on this. Uh, please, obliqua. Okay, so here, zoom. Probably we need a catheter with a little bit more, uh, or like Lima or something like this. Without... Okay. Samo Mamario. I think with the Lima catheter, we will have a better alignment. Uh, 
Let's try. Uh, I think yes. I am in. Okay. You see. So now, please, uh, Ape, Zoom. So mm -hmm. it's normal to feel some resistance when you are trying to enter to the contralateral side. And arriba, arriba. I mean, so we also, if you are doubtful, remember that you can rotate the catheter here inside the main body. If it is rotating freely, like here, you are absolutely sure that you are in. Now it's time for the ample squire. Um, we, mostrame más abajo, my need the a marked pigtail, a pigtail marcado. So he's a young patient. We try to keep the hypogastric artery open, although it has a significant osteal disease there. So we don't have to go too low with the contralateral branch. So fortunately, the patient is absolutely stable now. Nothing to do with the patient that we uh, started the procedure at the beginning. It was a really tough uh, situation again. So I will dilute, dilute the contrast just to inject very few amounts and mostly water or actually saline. Let me see. So we have almost 10 centimeters uh, until the hypogastric artery. Give me something. Okay. This is water. Road mapping, please. We are not using the vessel navigator, not because we don't like it, but this patient underwent a CT scan in another center and the quality is not good enough to put uh, here. So I think we need a 10 uh, DS. Okay. Well, could be shorter, pero 140, 120, okay. And then 20 is okay because we have 10 centimeters outside the device and three centimeter for overlapping. But once again, remember that this is not an aneurysmatic iliac artery, it's just an stenotic iliac artery. We don't have to put too much stent there. We open very nicely with the uh, lithotripsy balloon and then with the complementary regular balloon. So Dr. Gustavo and Dr. Joaquin, uh, remember that Joaquin is from Ecuador. He has a lot of friends to, uh, watching the case from there. Yeah. yeah, Andres. Clear. How we, uh, the question is how would we manage in this patient the antithrombotic treatment? I think here in this patient, the mandatory issue is gonna be the left main stenting. So it's a patient with panvascular disease, young patient, not stroke. Uh, of course, he has a COPD. So probably we have to discuss between, um, wait a minute, Joaquin, I need your help again. We, we have to discuss between, uh, between ticagrelor and prasugrel plus aspirin uh, for at least for uh, three months. And then we can probably move to monotherapy. But in this patient, uh, due to his so severe C COPD, probably prasugrel would be, uh, and being young and without strokes, prasugrel would be better. So uh, finally, I would say prasugrel and aspirin, uh, that for at least three months, and then uh, single. Uh, therapy for one year. Uh, let's, uh, I think we are perfect there. So let's see, here is three CC for overlapping and we will see where is the distal part here. 
So the distal part it is over the uh, hypogastric artery here, which is here. So I'm gonna go a little bit upper. So I will take the room mapping out because he is too obese and we don't have good imaging. Tacal mapping. And now we, we we might check with Ariel about the overlapping proximally. Let's go más arriba. So here. So markers uh, should, should uh, I mean, uh, have a coincidence between the contralateral stamp of the main body and the uh, volve, Joaquin, and the iliac stamp. So you are okay there. So you would rather like a little bit down, but I think I can pull during delivery. Let me know if you are happy there. I think it's okay. So now it's a perfect coincidence there. So I can push the device a little bit there just to make a little bit shorter. So what I will keep rotating. I will push a little bit. Okay, okay. So we should uh, release the proximal fixation. Mostrame más arriba. And now, which is free, Rotavo would rotate and I'm gonna, más abajo, I'm gonna shorten a little bit. Rotate it. Yeah. Excellent. So now, <clears throat> the proximal uh, retention uh, or security uh, retention wire was released. Now I can disconnect from here. And Gustavo can retrieve, leaving the wire in position. No. Yes. The delivery system, and we have the introducer here. I'm not gonna do tests again, just to prevent uh, the using of renal. Um, I want to post dilate with the compliant balloon. Okay. Here, the iliac artery and the, and the proximal neck. And then I will, I will release the omolateral branch. And we will introduce the omolateral uh, branch. So this uh, the special balloon is uh, uh, well aspirated. Mm. A lot of resistance. Is this new? No, no. I need a, the dedicated balloon. This is the the balloon for the. Uh, the aspirate again. Okay. Le mantengo aspirado. Okay. Should go in. I feel resistance now. It's better. Probably it's better aspirated now. Total. Okay, now it's wet. Now I am pushing everything in. I'm gonna inflate there. I have a good inflation there. Hold the wire, Joaquin. Okay. I'm gonna push everything all together. Inflate, Gustavo. Just to achieve a rectangular, I mean, configuration, it's okay. Uh, let me go up there. This is the connection between a stamp and main body. Perfect rectangular configuration, move up. And now I'm gonna go to the proximal neck. Here is a problem. I'm trying to go below the renal stem. That's why I didn't want to put the stem protruding that we usually protrude one or two millimeters, but here I made a, a different decision. You can inflate the air a little bit. Okay, you can push the wire, push. Metela, empujala. The wire is, para eso lo hago, déjalo, déjalo. Okay, Gustavo, okay. deflate. So Gustavo, uh, push the wire and, yes. and then you can retrieve the balloon. While Joaquin is aspirating, aspirating, please. Okay. 
following me, same me. Okay, let's go, let's go, push a wire. This uh, sheath has uh, absolutely hydrophilic, so you have to take care of not losing the position on the groin. So once again, I would accept that the outcome is okay. I will release the wire there, and complete the delivery of the main body. And now we have to recapture the proximal part. Uh, you have to. Do you avance? Okay. Okay, okay. So uh, Ariel is recommending me to disconnect and using Gustavo is going to push the wire. Mostrame arriba. It's important to see that you are going back very smoothly. Here, seguime. Now we are in, into the introducer, so Gustavo can go out uh, perfectly. Safe. So I, I'm more than happy that we could cross such a calcified iliac arteries. So now, once again, we might need the pigtail with marks, market pigtail. El Mark, pigtail marcado. Pigtail. Yeah. We still have 10 minutes for this case, at least. Maybe we can use some minutes from the other. The other is a regular PCI. Hopefully, we don't have so many problems down here, hopefully. So, from this side, the external iliac artery is occluded, so we don't have reference. So we had to decide where we, uh, it's gonna be the landing zone. In my opinion, it's gonna be near the roof of the bladder. So I think uh, 122, 120 is going to be okay because we can cover all, all this area that which was uh, dilated. Tenemos 10 más 2, 9 o 10 más los 12 overlapping. ¿Es ok? Sí, sí. Ok. ¿Would like to do a road mapping? Uh, no, because I don't have a, a hypogastric okay. here, so I don't have landing mark. Ok. Probably if, 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 if it is 13, or, sí, 13, I think 13 is uh, much better. The iliac artery is uh, very small. It's, remember, it's nine or something like this. Uh, 16 is going to be too big. So after so, deployment of uh, this branch, we're going to do uh, ballooning, then the angio, mm -hmm. and then hopefully we are finished. In this patient, I thought... I have thought that if we have proximal endoleak, we might introduce uh, a VR stand. But after doing left main, left renal, and the EVAR, I don't know if it is too much procedure, and probably I should wait for one month and bring the patient back and doing. So in this case, IBL was successfully done because to yeah. prevent uh, perforation, dissection, access complication at all. Any complication with the fatal because such an instability of this patient. So sorry for the noise. We have to release the device from the package. Other good uh, issue from this device is uh, that it, it has inline sheath. So it's a, this is a 16, 16 French sheath that we can use as a, a regular sheath to introduce the homolateral branch. Dr. Lev is uh, um, activating the. Yes, and humidification. Okay. In the, the coating, the coating, yes, which is uh, completely hydrophilic. So now here we need to clock the device, like now. 
So it's completely fixed. And we can advance all together. The sheath was not advancing. Let me rotate and move a little bit. Why? Mostrame más arriba. Okay. Uh, give me uh, oblique. Uh -huh. I have some no. problem here. Yes. And now I absolutely in. Yes. Okay. Okay. So markers are okay. Let me uh, sacala digital. Let me shoot some cine. Hey, front. Be sure. front? Huh? No, no. Okay. So I think markers are okay. Okay, but we can pull because we push all the device in. So after delivering, I can pull a little bit. What do you think? Okay, I am pulling a little bit. I am releasing the device here. Is that okay? Let's do Cine to see much better. This is one limitation of the device is the radio opacity. Of course, it's so uh, thin that the radio opacity is very low. Okay, probably let's release this part. The proximal now to disconnect here and to pull everything out. Give me the balloon. We will check the outcome. Let's uh, vamos a pe. And then we will decide what to do with the iliac artery. Probably we can use uh, regular stent or ¿Tiene, cover stent. ¿tiene de that we have authorized also a cover stent to use here. Let's, uh, okay, it's enough because let's go there. Okay, deflate, inflate, deflate. Careful that this uh, device is uh, soft. No, 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 muy fuerte, Gustavo. No, no. There. Okay, enough. Let's do an ancho, and then we will decide what to do with this iliac artery. Let me introduce all together a little bit. Okay, remove, put it up. Give me the pigtail, el, el regular, panoramic. Because we don't have uh, hypogastrics, so we have to aspirate here. Let's see. Okay. Okay, here. Uh, Gustavo, you might inject this is contrast or water? Con uh, water. Okay, I will aspirate here so we can have uh, flow in, on the iliac artery. Uh, can no respire? Okay, stop breathing. Inject. Oh, I think we have some porosity there because yes. this is not proximal leak. This is a porosity leak. So it's type four. We need to reverse the hyperinization and then everything is gonna be okay. The right iliac artery is okay. Yes. Uh, what? Yeah. No, no, yeah, yes. I, okay. We know, we know. No, it's okay. Um, so let's see. Give me the wire. Yes. Which the one? Amplets. The amplets. Okay. La izquierda. Bueno, mira. 
Ah, 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 sí, 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 voy a testear ahí. Uh, let me check the, the right side. Uh, let me put the, the wire, the ampla, yes. please. Okay, and we are going to introduce uh, 13 by 80, so we can cover all this area, and then we can uh, dilate this area at high pressure with a regular balloon. Take it out, uh, Gustavo. Da dámela. So the graph going to here, the... Uh, it's important. No, 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 I will uh, okay. introduce. Uh, this graph has a lot of porosity. So you need to wait for a heparin reversion and then the ANSHO follow-up. Uh, no, 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 and during the time. Now we cannot revert the heparinization because we have a stand on the left main, I know. So that's why I'm going to close the, the, the groin. But if we have some bleeding, Gustavo is going to handle by a long compression because uh, she thought not too big. So I think we might need to compress because we cannot uh, uh, revert the heparinization due to the stand on the left main. And I can move to the other room. Con un ocho. So we are going to post dilate the external inside the branch with eight. So once again, we need the connection here. The click, I can advance all together. Have some resistance there. Uh, I think we are okay there. It's okay? Perfect. So, okay, yes. So we have two or three centimeters overlapping. I don't move up. This is the coincidence between the two branches. Okay, and it's released. I release the nose. Okay, and Gustavo can move out. Let give me the, the balloon. The balloon. Yes. Patient is absolutely stable. Unbelievable. I think left main standing was the right decision. I had to be honest, Gustavo was more convinced than myself. Okay, in play, Gustavo there, 10, 12. Okay, well, deflate. Once again, dame water, un poco de agua. Well, okay. Take it out. Okay. Take your time, take your time. It's okay. Hey. Yes. In check, Gustavo, a little bit here. In check. Okay. Let me see. Digital. Okay. Acá. Ahí nomás. Okay. I think we have a okay. dissection there. Uh, we... Well, it's, uh, it's outside of the prothesis, isn't it? Yeah, because we are injecting there, we have... Um, we have two branches there. Probably calcium have ruptured the, the prosthesis. Give me one of the cover stem. We will sure that this is fixed. El, el stem forrado. We will put the one or two cover stem there. Nueve. Y el ocho, ¿cuánto es? No, nueve. I'm going to put the nine. Uh, 
millimeter power stand there because we have extra vaccination there. Probably the calcium have ruptured the, the graft of the device. And then I'm gonna put a stand uh, in the outflow. Okay. Ocho por cuánto? Nueve sesenta. Okay. Let's see. We are going here. Okay, I think this then is going to be enough for everything. I think it's, something is wrong here on the measurements. Let me deliver the stand. No, no, no. No, I don't, I don't touch it. Hold it there. Okay. Okay, perfect. Retrieve. Yes. Let me check. Is necessary dilatation or no? Okay. Give me some water. Oh, now Wonderful. it's beautiful. Okay, we are done. We don't need to post that late. And I think the stand is, was longer than, than Matias told me. Move here, we are going to close. Give me light. Keep the wire. Red says, Gustavo. Come on, eh, Joaquin. No, vamos a intentar. We are gonna try to, to close without heparin reversion due to this left main stenting. Okay. So Gustavo is gonna pull the device, okay. Okay, no, I hold it. And introduce the six French sheath. So we might see if we need an additional angiosil or no. Let me see how the situation is here. I think it's I think I think it's acceptable. You see, I don't have too much bleeding. Thumb, comprime. Can you? Okay. No, no, no. The cerrado. Okay, one, two, three. It's okay. Now, okay. Okay. And now, release. Release. Cargado. I think everything is in control. So, probably we can pull the wire. We can pull the sheath. We can pull the suture and then we have to compress for some minutes. Goodness. Y quizás lo podemos revertir la mitad. Uh -huh. Because there is so much calcium here. Uh, afloja. The situation is quite stable, you see. There is not much bleeding. I move to the other side. We will do the same. Sorry for taking 10 minutes from the other case, but this is an absolutely extraordinary case. Okay. So do you have the six? Okay. Yes. 
three. Patient is okay. Take it out. Leaving the wire and introduce a six French sheath. That's in case we had to introduce an additional angel seal. You might observe the obesity of uh, this uh, patient and how difficult this patient would have been for surgery. So the situation is absolutely stable here. Fortunately, despite the calcification, the suture is working. Let me see, no mix. And then Gustavo and Joaquin would compress for a while until everything is okay. While myself and Dr. Soltame, segundo. Ah. It's okay. Take everything out. So as you can observe, there is just a small oozing. That's for sure. Uh, it's going to be fixed with some compression. I think it was, uh, I know that the device has some other limitation, but this is the only device that could we could have used here. So I would say, let me move to the other side. Thank you for this case. Uh, I'm gonna move, uh, if you open the camera, I would say bye. Uh, and Zoom, please. Okay, great, here, great. The case is done, thank you Gustavo, thank you Joaquin, thank you everybody. Thank you. It's an absolutely uh, unusual case. I think it was very successful and I'm gonna move to the other lab to do this uh, PCI with Dr. Fowler. Thank you so, so much for uh, uh, helping us with all your questions.